surrounding a city with walls was never a bad idea. Pirates, raiders and rival states made fortifications a wise investment of time and money. The Vatican was no exception. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Andrew, I love Rome and on this channel we explore this unique city. Today, in this walking tour of the Vatican City, we're gonna see the walls of the popes. I'm here because some time ago, the Pope has been criticized for the walls of the Vatican City, so I decided to investigate. Our walk starts by the large doorway of the Vatican Museums. This wall marks the official boundary between Italy and the Vatican grounds. It was built shortly after 1929, when the Vatican became independent. The truth is, yes, the Pope does have the walls, but anyone can stroll through the Pope's front yard. The Vatican City, with these high walls, protects an area less than half a square kilometer. It's the smallest independent state in existence. It has its own postal service, radio station and television channel. Before the Euro, it also had its own currency. The population is just over 800. So following an attack by Saracen raiders, Pope Leo IV directed the construction of a wall around the Leonine city, which included the current Vatican territory, as well as the Borgo district of Rome. The 39-foot-tall Leonine wall, as it became known, encircled Vatican Hill for two miles. It was the first time the area had been completely secured. Many of the city gates were opened after the Muslims' threat had passed. Look at this strong and sharp bastion, whose project was drawn by Michelangelo, whence the name of the street. A large coat of arms of Paul III, bearing the six fleur de -lis of the Farnese family, whom he belonged to, hangs high above the corner. Paul III, and after him Pius IV, expanded the fortifications in the 16th century partially as a symbol of political might, but also to safeguard against political violence in Rome. Additional changes were made until the conclusion of Pope Urban VIII's papacy in 1640s. Here, the surviving part of the wall by Pius IV joins the older one built about 30 years earlier, under Pope Paul III. Note how their height is very different. The top of the first wall barely reaches the curbstone of the older one. Such difference is due to the ground on which they rest. Originally, the now flat street level was actually a slope. 
So don't forget that this is the base of the Vatican Hill. By the end of the 1800s, a huge embankment was created in order to fill in the aforesaid trench and flatten the slope, thus burying the wall of Pius IV up to a certain height. This is a large coat of arm of Pius XI, who reigned between 1922 and 1939, hangs from the corner. He was the pope under whose pontificate the Vatican gained its independence. On this very spot once stood Port Angelica, through which the pilgrims coming to Rome from the north along the Cassian Way entered the city. The gate was taken down in 1888. These medieval walls still run along the majority of the border of the Vatican City today. However, the 100-acre city-state is far from impenetrable.
Anyone can enter St. Peter's Square, where the only border is a white line drawn on the ground. Three of the six gates to the Vatican City are available to the public. Some areas of the Vatican City are off-limits to visitors, however, everything else is freely accessible, with the main impediments to a rapid entry being queues and the metal detector. I hope you enjoyed this walk. I am publishing new walks every week, so stay tuned and subscribe right now. Ciao!